Hi there, welcome back to the Depo. I am Roman and this is the sixth episode of our Chef Sharp introductory series. In the last episode, we helped Clara to get an overview over her sales during a day by introducing lists and list functions and functions as parameters and anonymous functions. This is pretty nice. But we have one big problem, which is that we need to enter all of our sales with strings. And with strings, we have no protection from, from entering a wrong string, so something completely wrong into our, into our sales list, which, which would then um, lead our, our, our results to be, be completely buggy and bogus. Um, in this episode, I we are going, I'm going to show you how to, to fix this problem by introducing one of the nicest patterns or, or features of the f -sharp language, which is discriminated unions in conjunction with pattern matching. It's a lovely subject, so let's go. All right, this is what we have up to now. We have all our functions, we get the price for a specific flavor, we get the results for one, uh, for our ice cream salts, we we get the special ice cream or the flavor for our specials, and we calculate everything together with our list functions um, that enable us to get our all our sales um, calculated. All right, but as I said, we have a problem because, for example, here we could enter something like red rising, and make a mistake. So I leave this here, uh, or I take this out, and I run this, and we see that we, we get a total result of 5 euro and 10 cents. When I want to enter a new, new red rising scoop, I expect because red rising is just store, strawberry, and strawberry equals 1.1 euros, we expect to get a result of 6.2 euro but we made a mistake here so when we run this we get just 6 euro because red rising is, is written in, in an incorrect way and our ice4 function said if it's like red rising in this way written in this way then we take the strawberry otherwise in all other cases used the vanilla which in fact um, maps to 0.9 euro to be able to fix this I'm going to introduce to you another keyword, which is the type keyword. With the let keyword, we introduce new identifiers or names into our program. With the type keyword, we can define actual types in our system. So we have the types that F -sharp is actually giving us, like float, string, and so on. But now we are going to define our own types. So let's do this. I define a type called special flavor and this type consists of two cases that's all there is to the flavor with a string i have infinitely many cases in in this case i only have two cases which are red rising and cream cream i also define another type which is called flavor and this type consists of two cases, which are enumeratable, um, which is strawberry and vanilla. So, what did we do here? We defined two new types with two cases. How can we instantiate one of those types? It's pretty easy because these cases are not just cases, they're actually constructor functions. So we can call this function to generate an instance of this type. Let's do this. I say vanilla. Just call this function. When I evaluate this, we, we see that the last value that we, that we evaluated is of type flavor, instantiated with vanilla. So we can bind this to a name let flavor and we see with, with the lens that that flavor is of type flavor okay. special flavor 
special flavor. It is red rising. So in there we see that the flavor is of type flavor because we, we instantiated it with vanilla and special flavor is of type special flavor because we instantiated it with the constructor red rising or with the case red rising. So when we evaluate this, we see that it's exactly like I just said. Cool. So let's kill those. We don't need those anymore. And we, we are trying to, or we're starting to fix our, our program by entering down here no, no strings anymore, but we are starting to enter those cases or types. So in here we say instead of the, the string red rising, we enter red rising, and instead of cream dream, we enter cream dream. For now, we, we leave this out and we see here that it's not a string list anymore, that the sales are not a string list anymore, but they are a list of special flavors. When we put our wrongly typed string into here, we see that we get an error message immediately. Why is that? Just because, I, as, I, as I told you, lists is our data types or the list is a data type that can hold any type but only one type at once so in here it says that all elements uh, elements of a list constructor expression must have the same type and this expression was expected to have type special flavor but here it has type string so when we enter this we also get a nice auto completion that we're we can't really uh, make any mistakes here anymore and if we would have done a mistake the compiler would have warned us immediately all right so i take this out and now we see that the price for special function gets a red squiggle under it so it can compile why is that because the price for special function expects a string and not a special flavor so we are checking how this price for special function is implemented uh, the price for special function is implementing by function composition of is4 and price4. And I hope you remember that the input of the whole function that is um, created by the function composition is the input of the first function of the composition. And in this case, it's a string. So we go to the is4 function. And here we say, see that this function expects a string as the first parameter. This is what we're going to change right now. When we see this function, we see that the function itself is pretty broke. Why? Because we said if the ice is red rising, then we take the strawberry. Otherwise, in all of our other cases, take the vanilla. This is not what we want. We want to have an exhaustive list of possibilities that we can get an ice or uh, a flavor for a special flavor. And this is exactly what we're going to do now. So let's do this. We kill this. And we use a new concept called pattern matching. Pattern matching, I'm, I'm starting to do this and later on I will explain what I have done here. So I said match ice with, and then I say red rising. And when it's red rising, I return strawberry. When it's cream dream, then I return vanilla. Cool. So we used our first pattern matching. What have we done here? So as I said, we have our types here. We have our cases here. And as I said, there are not just cases. There are also constructor functions. And the really nice thing is when we have an instance of this type, we can actually pattern match to, to, to get to know with which constructor this type or this instance was created. So when the, the instance was created with red rising, we match into this case. And in, in the other case, when it was cr uh, created with cream dream, we match the other case. And the nice thing, or one nice thing now is that these are the only two possibilities of 
instances of this type. So it's not like uh, what we had before, that it was just when we had a red rising we took the strawberry and in all other cases we took the we take the vanilla we can use um, an exhaustive check for our for our types and the exhaustive check is not only done by us it's done by the compiler for us so when we leave this out here the cream dream we see we get a green squiggle here and it says we have an incomplete pattern match on this expression for example, the value cream dream may indicate a case not covered by this pattern, which is pretty awesome because now we know that we missed one possibility in our code. And when we reach this part of our code um, and we have instantiated the type special flavor or this parameter here, the eyes, with a red rising, we would get a runtime exception. But this is not possible in this case because we get this warning or even a compiler error. Now, what we're doing right now is pretty much what you're doing most of the time when you're working in a language like f -sharp. You change one type and you follow the compiler arrows until everything compiles again. So here we have the next thing that is not working because the ice4 function now returns not a string anymore, but a flavor. So we need to fix the price4 function. With the price4 function, we have pretty much the same as with the ice for function, so we say match flavor with, and we say when the flavor is strawberry, we turn 1.1, and when the flavor is vanilla, we return 0 0.9. We erase this here. And then I think we should have fixed our whole program. So, evaluating this, all of our code, and then evaluating our um, function here that calculates the result for one day, we get again the 5 euro and 10 cents. And now, when we add the red rising with error completion and no errors whatsoever here, um, and we evaluate this again, we see that now we get our six euros and 20 cents. Isn't this awesome? I can't really say how much I love uh, discriminated unions and pattern matching. And we just scratched the surface of what is possible with these two um, features of F sharp. We will come back to this much more, um, or we come back to this later on, and we will dive much deeper into this. Okay, now all of this is working and Clara is pretty ha happy with it, but she's very smart, smart. And so she thinks maybe she could take a bit more money for her special flavors. When, for example, she, she visits a bit uh, a richer neighborhood, she thinks maybe she could use like two cents more for, for each of her special flavors. And when she visits a school or a neighborhood which is not so, so rich, she could just sell uh, strawberries and vanilla ice creams. This would be pretty cool, but this would um, expect of our program that it's able to, to, or that we are able to enter special flavors and normal flavors. So when we try this here, you say for example here, we also sold the strawberry flavor. We see that we get a compiler message. Why? Well, because strawberry, it's just a flavor. It's not a special flavor. And within a list, all the entries have to have the same type. And when we watch, uh, look up here, uh, we see that those are completely different types. So we can't really do this. And this exactly is what we're going to solve in the next episode. If you have any comments or any questions, please feel free to ask or to leave a comment. See you in the next episode. Bye bye.